Everyone knows that maintaining a relationship with a billionaire girlfriend isn't easy. You have to be wary of her male best friend, sweet talk her parents, and be as charming as honey. I thought I had everything under control and my girlfriend was deeply in love with me, but then I overheard her mother secretly tell her, he's just a gold digger after our house and land. My girlfriend has a male best friend, they grew up together, closer than siblings. When Willow and I first started dating, she introduced David to me this way, I believed her. Until Willow's junior in her research group hinted at me, George, you should visit our lab more often instead of just focusing on your projects. I was quite familiar with him, so I complained. I don't have time. You know my advisor's nickname, right? After a while, he replied, but that brother of Willow comes to the lab every day. Many people are guessing if you two broke up. I was stunned. But Willow wasn't the type to flirt around. I trusted her. If it were someone else, I might be jealous. But David was like her brother, so it seemed like a misunderstanding. However, one day, I went to see Willow and was a bit surprised. David was indeed there. It was hot, and he had ordered ice cream to Willow's lab. There was a counting error, and there was one less ice cream, so he said. Willow, you'll have to share with me. I stood at the door, watching him offer the ice cream to Willow. Willow, looking at her computer, turned away, saying, You know I don't like sweets. David wanted to say something more, but a junior had noticed me and called out, George is here, come in. Willow immediately turned around. David's hand shook, spilling the ice cream onto her skirt. It was pink, probably strawberry flavored. Willow, a clean freak, quickly shook her clothes and complained. You're so clumsy, it's annoying, David retorted. I was kind enough to bring ice cream for everyone, and it turns out wrong. Willow coldly replied, you dirtied my skirt, do we really need your ice cream? In the end, David offered to buy Willow new outfit, we took a taxi to the mall. Willow had a good figure and looked good in anything, but David praised everything she tried on, insisting she try this and that. Bore, I wandered around the store, subconsciously checking the price tags. Coming from an average family, this kind of mall was far beyond my spending range. Thanks to the mirrors placed all around the store, I saw David behind me, looking at me with disdain. What kind of expression was that? It was contempt, mockery and a sense of superior pity. My hand felt like it had been stunned by a bug, and the clothes slipped from my grasp. Indeed, it was good material, and under the air conditioning, my fingers felt chilly. David withdrew his gaze and walked away. I stood there quietly for half a minute before returning to the fitting room door. Willow, standing in front of the mirror, impatiently asked, David, are you satisfied now? The clerk quickly packed it up. No discount on new arrivals, for 1,999 yuan. Sir, do you have a membership card? Curing the price made my heart skip a beat. So expensive. It was just a light summer dress. I lightly tapped Willow's arm with the back of my hand, suggesting she shouldn't let her brother spend so much, especially since the original skirt wasn't that expensive. But David had already casually handed over his credit card. Just this one. Then he signaled to Willow, as usual, I buy you clothes. You treat me to dinner. They walked side by side through the mall, and a flower shop attendant approached. Sir, buy your girlfriend a bouquet of roses. We're having a promotion today. David smirked, seemingly about to say sure. I stepped forward, stopping him. Willow, if you like, I'll buy them for you. David's hand withdrew from the roses. He sneered. I just wanted to give my sister a bouquet. No need to be so sensitive, right? You don't usually give her flowers, and now you want to. That night, I couldn't sleep. I thought for a long time, trying to understand David's mindset. I listed three possible scenarios. First, he was naive and simply wanted to give his sister flowers. Second, he thought I was stingy and wanted to make up for it. The last was, he had feelings for Willow and wanted to ruin our relationship, growing up poor. I was sensitive, I often worried about misinterpreting others' intentions. I remember in middle school, a classmate once said, I took too many chicken legs. I can't finish them. You want some? I instinctively felt he was looking down on me, offering leftovers. But when I saw his bright smile, I realized I was overthinking. Since then, I developed a habit of not reacting immediately, but reflecting later to see if my mindset affected my judgment.
This habit gained me many true friends over the years, so I couldn't sleep, trying to figure out if it was my problem or David's. The first scenario didn't fit because the salesperson said, buy your girlfriend flowers, and he didn't deny it. The second scenario was absurd, based on the first. Even if someone defended another, their method wouldn't cross boundaries. His actions were like moving in with Willow because I was often away. True defense would involve advice. Thus, the third scenario seemed likely. Even childhood friends, no matter how close, shouldn't behave this way if the intentions were pure. My first meeting with David was in a cafe at C University. At that time, he had just returned from studying abroad after failing the college entrance exam. While Willow stayed local, when David returned during holidays, he found Willow had me by her side. My first impression of him was that he was enthusiastic but slightly arrogant due to his affluent background. However, as we got to know each other, I found him sincere and polite, often asking for my help with academic questions. Gradually, I saw him as a younger brother. Soon after, he surprised me with an expensive Omega watch through Willow. That day, it was rainy and dark, but the watch face still shone brightly. I went back to my dorm and looked it up online, unable to believe that he casually gave me a watch worth five figures. I told Willow to return it. I checked online. It's over 70,000. I can't accept such an expensive gift without reason, and such an expensive watch was worth more than all my clothes combined. I wouldn't wear it, but Willow objected. He probably bought it at a duty-free shop. Not at full price, just keep it. And David is very proud. Returning it would offend him. He always says he respects you like a brother. Returning it would be a slap in the face. Decides, compared to what my parents gave him, this is nothing. Somehow, my words reached David. He approached me, saying, George Shea, I actually have a favor to ask. Our professor assigned a paper, and I'm struggling. Could you help me write it? I wanted to refuse, your school is abroad, and the course content is different, I might not do well. David smiled. George A., my sister says you're a top student, you can definitely do it. Don't be modest, he indeed sent me the materials and assignment content. It was related to my major, but I was still hesitant doing it purely would be embarrassing. Refusing was awkward since I accepted his expensive gift. In the end, I spent half a month in the library, producing a passable paper. The week I finished David's assignment, Willow and David went on vacation to Japan, to families, six people. Traveling together, Willow asked if I wanted to join. I had saved enough money for the trip, but I couldn't bring myself to spend it all for a week's vacation, so I said, just bring me some souvenirs. Willow indeed brought back a box of gifts. She showed each one, telling me local stories. This way, it's like you were there with me. As for David, he ended his vacation early and flew back to school for years. He didn't return. From his social media, he seemed to be enjoying life, surrounded by friends dressed in luxury brands. I thought he would immigrate, but after graduation, he returned to Sea City. Now, Willow and I had graduated and were in graduate school. David had no proper job, sometimes saying he was applying for a master's, other times trying to start a business, but his ventures, like a bubble tea shop, quickly failed. Willow's mother once complained, David is a good kid, just spoiled by his family. Young people need something to do, or they'll waste away. My relationship with Willow was stable and recognized by her family. When visiting her home, if we met acquaintances, her aunt would introduce me as the prospective son-in-law, a great student. I like him a lot. Her friends naturally praised my promising future. But some things couldn't be said directly to elders. David's family wealth was evident. Even if he never worked, he could live comfortably. Unlike me, constantly fearing my poor background wouldn't impress Willow's parents. So, I worked hard on my studies, research, and impressing my professors, all to make my resume shine. Because apart from my resume, I had nothing. I said, David has good prospects. Any path he chooses will be smooth. Spending time thinking about his direction isn't being idle, it's honing his skills. This was a lie. What I truly thought was, David should find something proper to do, otherwise, he'd keep visiting Willow in the lab, dragging her to parties, dinners, movies, this wasn't a good sign. The reason I didn't immediately confront Willow about David was primarily because, while David's behavior was obviously problematic, Willow's attitude towards him wasn't. I've known all her friends over the years we've been dating. She treated David just like she treated them. If she met them without makeup, 
She met him without makeup, no pretense. If she scolded them, she scolded him just as harshly. Willow and I didn't have the habit of reporting to each other when we met friends, but when I asked about David, she would always tell me honestly. I once hinted, why does David keep seeking you out? Doesn't he have other friends? She seemed completely unaware. He was studying abroad for several years. His old friends have drifted apart. If Willow was innocent, but I insisted she set boundaries with her headstrong personality. She definitely think I was too controlling. By nature, I prefer indirect methods when facing issues. Subtle hints instead of direct confrontation. Leveraging others instead of taking action myself. And passive over active measures whenever possible. So, I devised a strategy. We had a classmate from undergrad, Lucas, whose cousin wanted to apply for a master's program at B University. He asked for help on his social media. Honestly, I had always been somewhat resistant to Lucas because of his personality. While I was more reserved, he was very flamboyant and loved being the center of attention. As a result, I rarely reached out to him. But this time, I not only helped Lucas's cousin revise her resume and prepare her materials, but I also personally took her to visit the professor. Although it was early to do these things, it's always good to be prepared in advance. Lucas's cousin, Anna, was a pretty girl but she always had a somewhat gloomy look in her eyes when she wasn't smiling. Ana's undergraduate background wasn't very strong. Although she had won some awards related to her major during her studies, her fundamental skills were solid, but the professor's attitude towards her was noticeably cold. Both Lucas and Anna were somewhat disheartened. I reassured them, at this stage, it's just about making a good impression on the professor. Ultimately, it's the exam results that matter. Don't worry, I'll contact some people from the previous year and get some study materials for her. Since I helped out, Lucas felt obliged to return the favor. So, he treated me to dinner. And when he was about to invite Willow, I stopped him. Willow is busy lately. Let's not disturb her. I don't want her to blame me for delaying her work. Having dinner alone with his cousin might raise suspicion, but with her brother present, it was different. A dinner with one girl and two guys, discussing school exams, sounded perfectly normal. I intentionally chose a popular restaurant where we spent an hour just waiting in line. By the time we finished dinner, it was already 10 at night. Perhaps because Lucas was overly enthusiastic, Anna became even more silent. Willow and I always called each other every night. By then, she had already called three times without getting an answer. I guessed her anger was reaching its peak, so I finally answered putting the call on speaker. George, where are you? There's no one in the dorm, and you're not answering your phone. Making sure both Lucas and Anna could hear, I responded with a hint of confusion. Is something urgent? I'm having dinner with Lucas and his sister. I was helping her with something, so Lucas invited me to dinner. Willow seemed taken aback for a moment, and after 10 seconds, she said, where are you? I'll come find you. Trying to cover up her earlier awkwardness, Willow arrived at the restaurant, warmly holding Ana's hand and calling her sister. We chatted about everything from stock markets to national affairs, with occasional jokes, keeping the atmosphere pleasant. By the time we returned to campus, it was quite late. I walked Willow to her dormitory, but didn't leave immediately. The night was hot and humid, and she hugged me, standing on tiptoe to kiss my cheek, suddenly a bit annoyed. Why didn't you tell me you were going out with a girl? And Anna was wearing a skirt, such a short one. I knew what Willow was thinking. A few years ago, before we started dating, many girls at school had asked if I was single. Even after Willow confessed, some girls still asked about me on campus message boards. But I never had meals alone with other girls, giving her a sense of security. I frowned, pretending not to understand. But I didn't hide it from you. Besides, it's summer, you see plenty of girls in skirts. Willow was at a loss, but Lucas's sister is a girl. I smiled pinching her cheek. Does it matter if it's a guy or a girl? I don't mind you hanging out with David. Why should you mind me with Lucas's cousin? We've never interfered with each other's friendships. Willow was speechless and just rubbed her head against my shoulder. I'm petty. I get jealous. How about this? Let's make a deal. You won't go out alone with guys, and I won't go out alone with girls. How about that? That's exactly what I wanted to hear. I smiled. All right. I thought my initial strategy was successful, that the situation didn't just fail to improve, it escalated. David found another way to make Willow ignore our agreement. He quickly got a girlfriend, then broke up, 
and got drunk at a bar late at night, he caused a scene at the bar, and the call went to Willow, with a valid reason. If David's parents found out, it would be a big problem for him. Willow went to bail him out. It was too late, and she couldn't find a place for him to stay, so she took him to her off-campus apartment. That apartment had just been renovated with basic appliances and was rarely used. She had wanted us to live there together instead of staying in the dorm, and she had been very open about it. My mom said this apartment is for us, for when we get married. I understood Liu's mother's intention. She probably realized I couldn't afford a house at the moment, so she made this preparation. The more she trusted me, the more I felt I needed to respect her daughter. So, I declined her suggestion. I was determined to buy a house with my own money before getting married. But what I didn't expect was that while I had never stayed in that apartment, David did. And he was the first to tell me about it. Early in the morning, he sent a message out of the blue. Wong, the mattress you bought is really comfortable. I want to get one too. I was a bit surprised. What mattress? Oh, I stayed over at Willow's place last night and found the mattress really nice. Willow said you bought it. I felt anger rising from my feet. The mattress was indeed bought by me. When we graduated from undergrad, Willow's family bought the apartment in her name and wanted her to decorate it to her liking. She thought it should be a style both of us like since we would live there together. So, that summer, we spent a lot of time at the furniture market. For New Year's, Willow gave me a computer as a gift. I wanted to reciprocate, but didn't know what to get. It happened that my roommate worked part-time for a mattress brand and had an employee discount. So, I decided on a practical gift and bought a mattress for Willow. When it arrived, she laughed so hard, praising me for being unique. It became a story she often told about her boyfriend's quirky gift ideas. David must have heard her tell this story. I clenched my fists, letting the pain from my nails digging in help regain my composure. Though my thoughts were a bit scattered, I needed to stay calm. So, I replied politely, sure, I'll give you the sales contact and you can mention my name for a discount. Unexpectedly, he replied immediately, no need, my parents are rich. I don't need to be frugal like you, calculating every purchase. The biggest worrying in my relationship with Willow was the disparity between our backgrounds. I hated hearing anyone suggest I was with Willow for her money. David knew this well, pretending not to catch his insinuation. I pressed the record button and calmly said, I can't help it. I have a marriage mindset, and I need to be frugal for our future. When you have a girlfriend, you'll think about these things too. David didn't reply. I turned off my phone, feeling a buzzing in my ears that took a long time to fade. So far, the situation had crossed my bottom line. I admitted I had many shortcomings. By conventional standards, I might not be a good match for Willow. My parents were factory workers with no educational background. In contrast, Willow's parents were well-educated and successful. One was a professor giving lectures worldwide. The other a thriving business person. Aside from my good brains and not too bad looks, I didn't have much to offer. David's disdain for me was understandable. But giving up my relationship with Willow because of his provocations would be foolish. Before David returned to China, Willow and I had been dating for over four years. Always very happy. Almost like a model couple on campus. I loved Willow. Her wealthy upbringing made her confident and cheerful. Qualities absorbed like a sponge supplementing my own. Old friends often said, George, you've changed since going to university. Actually, I had become more like Willow. And I knew Willow loved me wholeheartedly, according to her. She liked me from the moment she saw me give a speech as the top freshman. Later, when we studied late into the night, she would doze off while I stayed awake, keep drinking coffee. To stay alert and determined to be in the top three, Willow would sigh, George, you're so hard on yourself but I like it. Raised with frugality, I mended socks to wear them longer. Willow was my chosen girlfriend, and I wouldn't give her up because of David's provocations. Since subtle hints didn't work, this time, I decided to be direct. I found Willow and asked frankly, did you let David stay at our? No, your place for a night? Willow froze for a moment. He told you. I asked him not to mention it. Afraid I might misunderstand, she quickly explained. It was too late to call you. I went back to the dorm after settling him. You can ask my roommates, and there are surveillance cameras at the dorm entrance. I remember all my promises to you. It seemed she knew to keep a distance from David, but if she knew, why couldn't she follow through? Now wasn't the time to assign blame. I pretended to be surprised, 
What are you thinking? Why would I suspect anything between you and David? You've called him your brother for 20 years. Can't you comfort him when he's heartbroken? Willow seemed even more confused. I earnestly said, I just think your way of handling it wasn't quite right. David staying out all night his family might be more upset knowing my girlfriend took him in and he stay at our future marital home. It wouldn't look good. His family is prominent. They care about appearances. You should have called me to pick him up. This was the most rational explanation I could come up with. David was young and reckless. Willow was obligated by feelings, and I was completely non-jealous. Everyone had their roles, and it was quite interesting. Since childhood, I've always been sensitive, but my blood has a kind of courage that, once determined to do something, I go all in, never giving up until I reach my goal. So, when I saw my college entrance exam results and knew I could go to an ordinary university, I resolutely chose to retake the exams, just to get into a reputable school. I bet correctly, the extra year brought me to a higher starting point. And it was then that I met Willow, who was clearly not from the same class as me. Later, even though both Willow and I could have stayed at our current school for our graduate studies, I insisted on applying to the top domestic university B University next door. It was all or nothing during that time. I was so stressed that I lost 20 pounds, but I eventually succeeded. As it turned out, Willow was even happier than I was when she saw the admission letter, telling everyone, my boyfriend is a genius at B University. Our relationship gradually gained her family's approval after this. Since I decided to repair the cracks in our relationship, I couldn't give up easily. I thought the situation would be resolved. The willow broke my defenses with just one sentence. I've told Uncle Yi that David and I take care of each other, so they're very reassured. My smile froze on my face. So, the Yi family knew and allowed this. I was too naive. The trust of childhood sweethearts, built up over decades, was as solid as a fortress, impossible to crumble easily. I quickly adjusted to a sudden realization expression. Why didn't you say so earlier? I was worrying for nothing. Willa really thought the matter was over, and she snuggled up to me. Honey, you're the best, always thinking about me. I really couldn't refuse, you know. Uncle Yi has always treated me like his own daughter. I can't ignore David. I let Willow act cute, but I felt only irritation, but I shouldn't let emotions affect my thinking. There are always more solutions than problems. If David's parents don't mind him staying at Willow's house, Willow's parents will surely have something to say, right? After all, a beautiful daughter going to a bar in the middle of the night to pick up a guy and bring him home must be worrying. If nothing else, they should consider Willow's reputation and my opinion. I found an opportunity to mention to Willow's mother. Did you know David recently broke up? Auntie Yi was curious. Oh, what happened? I deliberately mentioned and the sleepover. David drank and slept over at Willow's place for a night. He didn't even tell his family. I am really worried about his mental state after the breakup. Willow's mother paused while peeling grapes. For a moment, I thought she would say something fair. But soon she started a long speech. They've always been like this, covering for each other since childhood. When one does something bad, the other protects them. She went on for 10 minutes about their childhood stories. My attempt fell through again, and my heart cooled bit by bit. Liu's mother also didn't think it was a big deal. In her eyes, Willow and David, even in their 20s, were still children. Their bond, built over years of growing up together, was stronger than my few years as a prospective son-in-law. If I suggested Willow and David avoid each other, she might think I was meddling. I really started to get tired of this matter. Such a childhood friend, impossible to shake off, provoke, or scold, wouldn't even appreciate reason. What to do? I decided to take a third approach. The story of if the mountain won't come to me, I'll go to the mountain can also be understood as moving the mountain so that no one can come over. Since I couldn't stop David from finding Willow, I would make Willow stay away from David. We both planned to pursue a research path, so if we applied for a PhD abroad, we could naturally separate David from us, and considering our career development, having overseas experience would be beneficial. Before David inserted himself into our lives, I had discussed this possibility with Willow. She was not very willing to leave her familiar environment, but said, if she went with me, she could accept it. The biggest obstacle was her family. Being a pampered daughter, her parents would probably be reluctant to let her go abroad. So, I had to plans for going abroad. 
the best outcome would be Willa willingly going with me, and her family not opposing, this would completely cut off David's influence on us. The worst outcome would be Willa willing to go, but unable to because her parents disagreed. But this was not unsolvable either. I could stay and let Willow feel guilty, causing her to distance herself from her family, including David. It sounded like there were many uncontrollable factors, but if I planned carefully and executed properly, success was possible. 0.06 with my mind made up. I worked almost desperately to make my resume impressive enough to get a full scholarship covering living expenses. I spent day and night in the lab, occasionally taking a five-minute break to check social media. David's personality naturally inclined him to share. I knew all his social accounts. His main account showed him as a sunny guy, with many followers, often receiving comments like a charming woe from a wealthy family, but he also had a secondary account, where he sometimes posted sentimental, sometimes literary, and occasionally silly and funny content. Honestly, if I didn't know him personally, I might find the secondary account version of David quite easygoing and would be willing to be friends with him while I was grinding away at my articles. David's main account posted photos of him and Willow at a friend's gathering. Five or six friends, arms around each other, with David closest to Willow, their eyes looking as close as a couple's. My heart was suddenly pierced by something sharp. I had always been certain that Willow had no romantic feelings for David, which is why I did so much. But what if I was wrong? Overthinking gave me a splitting headache, going downstairs to get takeout. Perhaps due to two days of continuous fatigue and low blood sugar. I stumbled and fell down the stairs. It was a hard fall. My ankle twisted and my forehead bled. It was utterly embarrassing. It was Sunday night and the teaching building was empty. Despite the commotion I made, no one came to check. I struggled to sit up and open my phone to see who could help me. I clicked on Willow's WeChat profile. Our last voice messages were, Today is David's birthday. We re-going to sing. I lines call you later when I am back in the dorm. Okay, I'll wait for you. Willow was with David. Was it the right time to call her now? Tain clouded my thinking. I hesitated for half a minute, unable to make the most beneficial decision. When I opened my eyes again, there was a pair of shoes in my sight. Pure white sneakers, spotless. The owner of the shoe squatted down slowly, their gaze level with mine. It was Anna. Her appearance here wasn't surprising after failing to see the advisor. She started contacting senior students, occasionally helping us run errands to earn a good impression. This little girl was quite purposeful, somewhat like me. Anna lowered her gaze. Senior, if your girlfriend is too busy celebrating someone's birthday to come, I can take you to the hospital. She hurt everything. I felt a bit embarrassed and tried to explain. No need to trouble you. I can go to the hospital myself. Anna pinned me with one sentence. There's a problem between you two. Her tone was indifferent, and I couldn't discern her intentions, but I don't really care. She extended her hand to me. Get up. I'll take you to the hospital faster. Isn't the senior racing against time to publish papers? The time you waste now will need to be made up for later. I hesitated for three seconds, but didn't refuse her help. Anna was right. Even if I wanted to use my injury to manipulate Willow, I couldn't let the injury delay my paper's data. She helped me up. She looked slim but had the strength to support me down the stairs. Thank you. No need. Anna was indeed efficient. In less than an hour, my ankle sprain was treated. And the doctor gave me some oral glucose. The CT scan showed no serious issues. It was quite late, but Anna showed no signs of fatigue. She calmly organized my hospital documents, sorting them by size, and said, You can call your girlfriend now. What? Call your girlfriend to come see you. A boyfriend gets injured, but only after handling everything does he call her. Seeing such a considerate boyfriend, her guilt should double this, is what the senior is thinking, right? Don T worrying about me leaking anything. Just consider it a thank you for introducing me to a tutor. Maybe my mind was really sluggish. It took me a long time to understand that Ana had seen through my intentions long ago, while I racked my brains. To set traps for Willow, this girl guessed the whole situation from just a few words. With similar people, there's no need for many words. I smiled, since you think that way. I want to be polite with you. It was past midnight when Willow's call came as expected. Her voice was obviously happy from the fun. We just finished, but David wants to go too. I interrupted at the right time. Then you go ahead, Don T. Worrying about me. George, what's wrong? I coughed lightly to make my voice even more hoarse. 
I accidentally fell and just finished seeing the emergency doctor. I'm about to take a cab back to school. Willow's voice immediately turned anxious. Why didn't you tell me? How could you do this? Wait for me. I'm coming over now. I hung up the phone. Anna stretched and stood up. I'll leave now. Good night. I thanked her again. Half an hour later, Willow appeared at the door. Her worrying and concern were genuine. That's just how she was, full of emotions and soft-hearted. Willow carefully read my medical records, then cautiously supported me as we moved towards the door. You got hurt and didn't tell me. George, do you know how much it hurts me when you keep everything to yourself? If something happens and you don't tell me, I'll feel terrible. I smiled and shook my head. I can tell what's important and what's not. I just fell. But it's David's birthday, which only happens once a year. And all your friends went. How could you not go? Willow stopped, dissatisfied. What's the big deal if we don't celebrate a birthday? What if something happened to you? What would I do? Okay. I get it. You talk too much. No. George, I need to make this clear. You're always the most important to me. If something like this happens again and you hide it from me, I'll never talk to you again. You're so awful. You have to tell me if anything happens, got it? Willow kept nagging, but I was too tired to listen. My gaze drifted to the girl, the clinic door. The streetlight was stark white, outlining her lonely figure. Anna, with her head slightly lowered, threw the paper cup into the trash can, then looked up at me. Her eyes were distant, as if watching an outsider's performance. I nodded slightly at her. Anna made a victory sign at me, then turned and disappeared into the vast night. Because of my fall, Willow has been completely compliant with me, almost staying by my side 24 7 If it weren't for my persuasion, she probably wouldn't even want to go home on weekends. But my goal is more than that, taking advantage of this opportunity. I also made appointments in other departments, such as for poor sleep and digestive issues, and had all sorts of minor ailments checked. One doctor, after reviewing my test results and various reports, spent quite a while explaining to us the illnesses that could result from staying up late, poor diet, and overthinking. Young man, don't think you can get away with everything just because you're young. You need to take good care of your body. And you, young lady, keep a closer eye on him. After picking up the medication, Willow looked obviously worried. She carefully advised me. George, I know you work very hard, but I want to say, you really don't need to push yourself so much. Huh, you dot you can take a break. It's not just men who can be a support for women. I can be your support too. I was stunned and didn't speak for a long time. Willow thought I was angry and hurriedly explained. I don't mean that you should rely on me or that your efforts are useless. I mean, look, although my family isn't very wealthy, Supporting our expenses is more than enough. Given her parents' financial strength and their love for her, more than enough was likely an understatement. I shook my head and said seriously, it's because your family is well off that I'm pushing myself so hard. George, do you think I don't feel tired? Do you think I don't need a break, but I don't dare to, because I don't have the confidence? For so many years, I've never shown too many negative emotions in front of Willow. In her eyes, I've always been serious, ambitious, resilient, and never willing to admit defeat. But this time, I honestly told her that I felt miserable many times over the years. Even though I'm a man, many social etiquettes and manners I've learned from Willow. Her well-off background has always made her posed and graceful, while I, in contrast, often felt clumsy like a child. Sometimes I would silently recite these so-called social niceties in my mind repeatedly memorizing them and making them my own. The first time we went on a trip, it cost over 5,000. I insisted on not splitting the bill. On the way back, my phone broke, adding an extra expense. I ate instant noodles for two weeks, waiting for my part-time salary to be paid. It wasn't until I got into B University for graduate school that I mustered the courage to visit Willow's parents. Like a fox borrowing the tiger's might, I used the school's name to feel confident enough to meet them. But getting into B University didn't mean everything would go smoothly from then on. A wealthy classmate was good at spending money to build relationships. I was tight on money and couldn't afford to treat people, so I took a different approach solving problems for junior students diligently and patiently to achieve the same effect. Even when studying abroad for a PhD, I couldn't, like David, afford millions in tuition. I had to rely on scholarships. I even considered lower-ranked schools for the sake of scholarship amounts. 
That's how sensitive and insecure I am. No matter how carefree I appear on the outside, I'm always anxious inside. The source of my anxiety is the fear that, as someone from a small town, I don't deserve Willow, who grew up in a privileged family. For someone who is usually strong to show vulnerability, it's particularly shocking. The result of bearing my soul to her was just as I expected. Willow's eyes turned red. George, don't be like this. You're already excellent. I've never thought you don't deserve me. I never cared about your background. I love you very much. And I promise I will only love you more and more. Don't overthink. Okay, I believe she was telling the truth. Willow has a sincere and straightforward side to her character. If she trusts someone, she will wholeheartedly open up to them without any defenses. I laughed through my tears and playfully tapped her nose with my finger. Silly girl, you're already so good to me. How do you plan to love me more? Are you going to make other couples jealous to death? Willow didn't respond. There was a determined and urgent look in her eyes. I could vaguely guess what she was thinking. And this was the result of my careful guidance. We've been dating for five years. Moving to the next stage seems like a natural progression. Actually, if it weren't for David's interference, I wouldn't have gone to such lengths to maintain our relationship. But giving her a little push at the right time isn't a bad thing. In the following days, I constantly made a show of playing on my phone and chatting with friends mysteriously. Occasionally, when Willow picked up my phone, she pretended not to see the message notification your romantic setup has been shipped. We both pretended not to know anything. The weather had cooled down, and one autumn day was my 24th birthday. My plan was set for this day. I pretended to invite Willow to a restaurant just to celebrate my birthday. But even if she had some inkling, she was still moved to tears when she saw the restaurant decorations. I had invited a dozen of our mutual friends as witnesses. Under everyone's gaze, I knelt on one knee, opened a small velvet box in my hand and asked under everyone's watchful eyes, Willow, will you marry me? The projector in the center of the restaurant played a slideshow of our photos over the years. We attended classes together, competed together, joined clubs together, and traveled together. Her makeup became increasingly adept, and my demeanor became more gentlemanly. The happiness captured in these photos, even when viewed years later, would still be moving. I thought I was someone who could control my emotions, but when I heard her say yes, my eyes turned red. This moment was captured by our friends and posted on their social media platforms. Everyone was laughing and offering congratulations. The laughter felt like endless waves, making me dizzy. But in the next moment, Willa's phone rang. She glanced at it, and her expression suddenly became serious. She gestured to me and went to a quiet spot to take the call. I quietly approached and overheard Willow's mother's anxious voice. Curry. David is in trouble and at the hospital. Willow sounded a bit helpless. Mom, I'm in the middle of something important. What nonsense are you talking about? You're secretly getting engaged to George without telling us. And we haven't even scolded you for being unladylike. But David rushed out to celebrate with you, got hit by a car, and now you need to come see him. Mom, can I come later? I'm with George. We've been friends with the Yi family for decades. Remember how Uncle Yi treated you when you were little? You're being unreasonable, dragging this out and making me so anxious. Willow sighed. All right, all right, I'll go right away. She hung up the phone but seemed to be struggling with herself and didn't come back to ask me immediately, seeing Willow's conflicted expression. I clasped my hands together. The ring on my ring finger was pressing painfully. David, again. David, why does he keep appearing in my life? Is it really just a coincidence that he got injured at this critical moment, suddenly? I felt that all my efforts were meaningless. Willow was always like this, so soft-hearted that calling her a white lotus would be an insult to the flower. She felt heartache when I got injured, so naturally, she would worry about David. Even at my proposal event, she couldn't resist her mother's orders and planned to leave me to see David. And what about me? Left alone to handle our friends. Though she felt conflicted because of me, Ultimately, I would become the price of her conflict. But why should I bear the cost of her conflict? The friends present were not just her friends, but also mine. Should they also share in my embarrassment? I slipped into the bathroom to calm myself down. It felt like an axe had split me into two. One part was furious, madly wanting to rush out, slap Willow hard, and cut all ties with her forever. The other part was calm and rational, carefully weighing how to act in this situation to avoid being laughed at by everyone. No matter what I did, 
It felt wrong, and no matter what I did, it felt humiliating. I didn't want to keep fighting with David, I could certainly continue to influence Willow, but what would be the result? Even if I won against David, so what? That would only mean gaining the respect that other couples naturally deserve. Perhaps it's time to let go completely, but now is not the time to break up. After years of dating, Willow and I shared to many overlapping circles. Even if it's a bad ending, I need to design a conclusion where no one can fault me. Five minutes later, I walked out with a calm expression and asked Willow if something had happened. When she explained that David got injured while hurrying to celebrate with us, I didn't question why he had to come personally instead of sending a text, nor did I criticize how careless he was, nor did I doubt you're not a doctor, what use will you be there? Instead, I suggested without any resentment, you should go see David, I'll handle things here. Your family and the Yi family have a close relationship, so you should go. But with so many friends here, we should give them face too, so go, I'll take care of them, I can manage my own event, if Willow had changed her mind at that moment, I might have reconsidered my decision. But she didn't seem to notice my emotions and instead felt relieved. All right, George, I'm glad I can rely on you. I'll be back as soon as I can. She really left. I watched her leave, feeling as if I were saying goodbye to the past five years of my life. This proposal, despite the sudden absence of the hostess, did not become awkward. I used all my social skills to make sure everyone was well taken care of. I took photos myself and asked others to take photos of me. The more I felt hurt inside, the more I smiled openly. By the end of the lunch, I hadn't eaten much, but I didn't feel hungry at all. After sending off all the guests, I decided to go to the hospital. After all, David was injured, and I had to see him. I asked the waiter to pack a few decorative roses for me. These roses were just like the ones we saw in the mall. Since David likes giving flowers, I'll give him a bouquet too. By the time I rushed to the hospital, it was already evening. Everyone in the hospital looked hurried and worried. Despite my recent Joe, when I passed by a mirror, I saw that my face looked just as anxious as theirs. I found David's room without any trouble, just as I suspected. His injuries weren't severe, at least, it seemed to me that he had only scraped his knee. But since he was lying in a VIP hospital room, there must have been a reason for it. I didn't question it and simply placed the bouquet of flowers beside his bed. He lay there with his eyes closed, appearing to be asleep. I greeted his parents, who were sitting by his bedside. They had the same air as the Liu family parents, an inherent condescension masked by kindness. But perhaps it was my imagination. Their faces seemed a bit awkward. Uncle David hesitated to speak, while Aunt David sighed deeply and patted my shoulder. You must be George, right? This time, it was our David's fault, I'll scold him. He's been spoiled by us, it's our failure as parents, Uncle David hissed softly, gently patting Aunt Arm, what are you talking about? The child is lying in the hospital bed, can't you wait until he's better to say anything? Aunt David glared at him, you just keep indulging him, sooner or later. But she didn't finish her sentence out of consideration for me. I had long known that David was the beloved son of older parents and had been excessively spoiled. Today's encounter only confirmed it. However, if it was merely because David disrupted our proposal, it didn't seem worth such a fuss. Their conversation held hidden meanings that I needed to clarify. I turned and left the room, attempting to find Willow. Luckily, it didn't take long. I saw her shadow in the stairwell on the top floor. Standing next to her, holding her arm, was her mother. She was earnestly advising. George is a good man. Mom has never said he wasn't. But getting engaged is a big deal. You agreed without discussing it with the family. Do you think you're grown up and don't need your parents anymore? Willow, feeling raunt, said, I've been with George for five years. Shouldn't we get married? Yes. But now with David in this state. Child, should you reconsider before making a decision? We can't neglect David. Willow frowned and said, Stop it. David is lying. I grew up with him. Don't you think I can tell? He's full of lies, and you still believe him? How could he possibly like me, although I had already known this? Hearing it from their mouths still shook me. The amount of information in those few sentences was overwhelming. If I hadn't already decided to give up on this relationship, I would probably be feeling unbearable pain. David indeed liked Willow and had just confessed his feelings to her. But Liu's mother insisting they couldn't neglect David caught me off guard. 
I had previously suspected numerous times, Aliu's mother had said that they were covering for each other, thinking that David staying at Willow's house was no big deal. Was I being overly suspicious, or did she have other intentions? Now the answer was clear. At this moment, I felt a bit like laughing. Twenty years of being childhood friends, but not turning into lovers, they probably thought I was the intruding third party. Willow's mother was still pleading, even if you don't believe it, we still need to give the David family an explanation. How about this? You're still young and haven't graduated yet. There's no rush. Don't get the marriage certificate now. Wait until David gets better. Willow seemed to be at her wit's end with her mother's persistence and turned, hitting the stainless steel railing in the stairwell with her bag in frustration. The loud noise echoed in the empty stairwell. Her mother was startled and stopped talking, covering her face and squatting down, sobbing. I no longer wanted to watch this farce. I don't remember how I left the hospital and returned to the school. My phone battery was almost dead. Today, my WeChat was flooded with messages. Everyone congratulating me on finding my soulmate. How ironic. At noon, I was still eagerly anticipating a happy ending with Willow. But by evening, I learned that David indeed liked her. And Liu's mother was pleading with her to reconsider. Am I disheartened? Self-pitying. Not really. It's just that I finally understood everything. And that's it. My parents didn't finish high school and could only work in factories. Factory work was both hard and poorly paid. Our relatives were either old or sick, always borrowing money. It wasn't until I went to college that our situation improved a bit. That's why I was cautious. After dating Willow for three years, I didn't dare accept her invitation to visit her home. I was afraid of being asked, what do your parents do for a living? George, Willow had told me countless times, my parents aren't like that, they only care if you're a good person. I was tempted. By held back until I got into the university's graduate program before visiting. That day, they were extremely warm and praised me endlessly. I naively thought it was my suspicious mind misjudging them. Turns out, I was too naive. Willow's parents never approved of me. They just didn't want to upset their daughter, so they didn't oppose it. Dating was fine, but marriage was out of the question. The more I thought about it, the colder I felt. I desperately needed something to warm me up like alcohol, but I couldn't drink too much because Willow might want to talk to me, and I needed to stay rational. I restrained myself and bought three cans of beer, sitting quietly in the stands of the playground, drinking in silence, but by 11.30 p.m., Willow still hadn't contacted me, not even a WeChat message, so I lazily typed out a message while holding a beer can. I went to the hospital to see David tonight, but didn't see you, I'm going back to the dorm to rest. Let me know when you're settled, love you. We had to break up, now that my emotions were overwhelming me, staying calm was the best strategy. Once I was clear-headed, I'd come up with a plan. The breakup had to be initiated by me, but the reason couldn't be because of me. Alcohol numbed my nerves, and for once, I slept in. When I woke up, I felt pretty good. I went to find Willow and check on David, when I asked if anything happened in the hospital. Willow's eyes looked a bit unnatural. Nothing. Just that David was careless and didn't look while crossing the row. He'll be discharged in a few days. Willow wasn't good at lying. Her current behavior was already forced calmness. There could be many reasons for her hiding the truth from me. Maybe she didn't want me to worry, or maybe she was afraid I'd be angry with David. Either way, not being honest with me meant she was struggling inside. I said nonchalantly, Oh, that's good. I'm relieved. But about our marriage certificate? Willow's body tensed up, but I quickly added. I thought about it again and decided it's better to wait until after graduation. After all, marriage is a big deal, and our parents should meet again to discuss. Plus, there's a lot going on right now, I don't want to mess things up. Willow didn't say anything, she just threw herself into my arms and hugged me tightly. George, I won't let you down. You have to trust me, Helm. Trust her. I've trusted her many times before. I've given her so many chances, but unfortunately, she never sees them. This is understandable, though. Willow didn't grow up lacking security like I did. When she encountered opportunities, she didn't cling to them like an octopus. Willow was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She had countless opportunities in her life. Losing one wasn't a big deal because another would come along. This time, 
My last bit of gentleness for her was exhausted. I once thought Willow was my lifelong partner. She was sincere, passionate, and kind-hearted. We shared academic pursuits and even laughed at the same obscure parts in movies. But I overlooked that she was also a dutiful and obedient child. If her mother asked her to do something, she wouldn't refuse. I said, David's accident worries me. We're both only children. If something happens, our families would be so worried. Why don't we stay at the university for our PhDs instead of going abroad? Willow was overjoyed and agreed. She wasn't particularly keen on being thousands of miles away from home, so this was the best for her. Willow's application materials were withdrawn, but I didn't withdraw mine. Instead, I applied to a few more schools. Like I said, I'm a gambler. I bet that without love, my luck would shift to my studies. I bet that with heaven's favor, I'd get impeccable experimental data and publish satisfying papers. Lastly, I bet that since Willow didn't dare reveal David's confession, I'd play along and catch her off guard. I acted as if nothing had happened and increased my visits to the Liu family. After all, I was the legitimate boyfriend. I visited frequently, often bringing gifts and fruits, so even the gatekeepers and cleaners knew I was the Liu family's prospective son-in-law. As for adding their WeChat and helping with minor issues like phone screen problems, that was just courtesy, not ulterior motives. Once, I heard a cleaner in the community praising me to Willow's mother, saying I was a handsome young man and that she was fortunate. Oh, you're not married yet. When will we get to attend your wedding? I couldn't see Willow's mother's face, but I guessed she didn't feel fortunate but rather frustrated. What made her even more uncomfortable was my suggestion to visit the David family next door. David got hurt while celebrating with me, so I should visit him. David, naturally, was reluctant to see me. Aunt David received me, and we chatted about school stories, with no shortage of topics, during our conversation. I surprisingly discovered that both of them were half-involved in academia and were even classmates of my mentor. So, I had an idea. Eagerly, I showed her the WeChat conversations between my mentor and me. Auntie Yi, this is the girl my mentor asked me to introduce to David. Don't you think they make a perfect match? If you agree, I can introduce them. Chapter 12, the girl's resume and photos were real, and the mentor had indeed asked me to help her find a partner. However, my purpose in showing them was not to introduce her to David, but to take this opportunity to display my social circle to the David family. Most of what Aunt David knew about me probably came from what Willow's mother had told her. Therefore, I feared that the David family's impression of me was still stuck on a student from a small town who only knows how to study and whose family is poor. Calmly, I pulled out a few more photos from my phone and spoke as if it were casual conversation. Look, this is a photo of me with Professor Zhang and this other student at an academic conference, Professor Liu published an article, and some of the data was done by me. Oh, I heard he once worked at your institution. Do you know him? Finally, I showed a photo of me, Willow, and other professors and students from B University. It was taken when I won an award at a competition, and my friends helped me take it. In the sunlight, everyone was smiling happily. Willow and I stood in the center. Willow and I are very fortunate to have met great mentors, who happen to be friends. Both of them want to be the witnesses at our wedding, which is quite interesting. The more I spoke, the more serious Ad Ito's expression became. She probably didn't expect so many people to endorse our love. Seeing her expression, I knew David couldn't cause trouble anymore. My relationship with Willow was indeed coming to an end, but a friendly breakup was impossible, especially with David. I couldn't let him get what he wanted. I admit I was still gambling. I bet that even if Aunt David allowed her son to steal a girlfriend from a poor, unsupported student, she would have to reconsider if that student was a cherished pupil of her colleagues or peers. The David family undoubtedly liked Willa. Arranging a marriage between these childhood friends would save them a lot of trouble. But, compared to the overly indulgent Uncle David, Aunt David still had some rationality. Willow and I had been dating for five years, and our proposal had already been publicly announced through our social circles. A respectable family would not allow their child to interfere in such a relationship. From what I gathered, Aunt David was naturally conservative, always proud, and had worked within the system for half her life. She was more concerned than anyone about her reputation. As the saying goes, 
The barefooted are not afraid of those with shoes, compared to David. I was the barefooted one. Unless David and Willow could get married, the David family wouldn't dare take that risk. I won the bet. Two days later, when I talked to Willow about David again, she said, he went abroad. He'll go first and then slowly choose a school. And he went with him. David had spent a year idling without deciding his future, but after one visit from me, he had it figured out, I averted my gaze, pretending not to notice Willa's thoughtful expression. Perhaps David's parents finally decided to take decisive action and could no longer tolerate their son's reckless behavior. David's departure abroad clearly affected Willow's mother. Or maybe Aunt David had told her something, making her suspect that I was involved. When I visited again, she clearly told me not to come so often. She claimed she had health problems and needed to go to the hospital. Headaches, shoulder pain, eye discomfort. If the hospitals in City C couldn't find the problem, then she would go to the major cities of Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangzhou. But what she really wanted was to separate Willow from me. The tricks were the same as always. What I could think of, Willow's mother could think of too, it didn't matter because I had already received my first offer. Although it was only a half scholarship, it was still a significant encouragement. In the future, I would receive more. I had already prepared my escape route. The reason I maintained the current situation was that I wanted to leave cleanly and beautifully. I thoughtfully encouraged Willow to accompany her mother for treatment. Willow didn't want to, fearing it would affect her graduation. So I spoke for her mother. Children should be filial. So Willow shuttled between the hospital and school. Finally, her mother grew tired of the hassle and returned to City C to rest. I noticed Willow had lost weight, so I volunteered to make her some nourishing soups. There was no way to cook in the dorm, so I went to the house Willow's mother had prepared for our wedding. Willow had given me the key to Peony Garden, but I rarely used it. The house prices there were high, and I feared her mother would think I was after their money. But now, there was no reason to avoid it. I wanted them to think my true intentions were showing. I frequently went in and out of Peony Garden, cooking and bringing food to Willow. Of course, I also shared the food with my mentor and classmates. Some friends of Willow's parents lived in the same complex. Occasionally, they saw me with the food container, stopped to chat, and praised me as a considerate man. These words always reached Willow's parents' ears. Some even asked, out of curiosity. When the daughter would get married so they could give a wedding gift, I knew the time was near. On Willow's 24th birthday, I asked everyone in the lab to celebrate together. The place, again, was Peony Garden. I took photos of the decorated living room, the cake I made, and the ingredients for the hot pot, and posted them on my social media with the caption, reserved for the rest of my life. I rarely showed my love publicly before. I always believed that true happiness didn't need to be displayed. But this time, I made an exception. Willow's mother had my WeChat and would see it. I guessed she would find a way to interfere, and so she did. While we were eating and drinking, making nose until 9.30 at night, Auntie arrived. Willow's classmates greeted her, but with an adult present, they didn't want to stay long and soon left. I said, Auntie, you're not feeling well, you should go home and rest early. I'll clean up the living room and kitchen, but she smiled. Gently pushing me out, a bow shouldn't always be in the kitchen. Go back to school with your classmates. I knew Auntie had come with the purpose of not letting me stay overnight in that house. David could stay, but I couldn't. How amusing. I pretended not to understand her intentions and left with the classmates. Halfway through, I realized I had forgotten my phone and asked the classmates to accompany me back. I had made a little trick with the door, leaving it slightly ajar. Through the door, I could hear fragments of Willow's mother's angry voice. They're not even married yet, and he's already inviting friends over. Imagine how it will be after marriage. What did I tell you? Mom has never been wrong about people. That beau, George, is cunning. Coming from a poor province, people there are full of tricks. He's only after our house and money. You must open your eyes and not be fooled by him anymore. My heart finally settled. The result was even better than I expected. I had waited two months, provoking repeatedly, behaving like a caring fiance, until Willow's mother finally took action. The moment of her outburst was the perfect opportunity to announce our breakup. I stood there like a statue. The two classmates who came back with me exchanged worried glances and approached to pull me 
Senior, it seems like Auntie is in a bad mood. Why don't we go back? One of them was secretly competing with Willow for a scholarship. The other was a gossip lover. Knowing all the rumors on campus, I trusted they would tell everyone who needed to know about what they saw and heard tonight. I gave them a helpless smile, then gently knocked on the door and entered calmly. The mother and daughter, in their confrontation, were startled to see me. Sorry to interrupt, I forgot my phone. I retrieved it from the sofa, then turned to Willow. She looked embarrassed, unable to meet my eyes. I smiled at her, both helpless and affectionate. The engagement ring I had been holding fell to the floor, rolling and stopping at her feet. And also, let's break up. I used to see others cry their hearts out after a breakup, feeling as if the sky had fallen and their intestines had been cut into pieces. I always thought they were just being melodramatic. Only after experiencing a breakup myself did I realize. It truly was melodramatic. I wasn't nearly as heartbroken as I imagined I would be. Maybe it's because my heart has been broken too many times and I've become numb to the pain, as expected. The two classmates who witnessed the whole breakup spread the story. My proposal to Willow had been quite public, and the reason for our breakup was so infuriating that many people sent me WeChat messages to comfort me. I didn't reply to any of them. Since I decided to be the kind person who blesses the ex after a breakup, I shouldn't say much. Willow's mother wasn't wrong. I am indeed calculating and scheming. Unfortunately, at the beginning, I also offered my heart unreservedly to the one I loved. It was she who shattered it with her own hands. A few days passed, and I had had enough of looking heartbroken. I stopped moping around in the dorm and occasionally went out to do experiments. Willow stood at the dormitory entrance, looking pitiful. She had, of course, sent me countless messages and made numerous phone calls. Over and over, she said things like, My mom is my mom. I am me, I truly love you, George, and please give me another chance, unable to bear the harassment. I started looking for company, my roommates were even more agitated than I was. Sometimes, when Willow pestered me too much, they would loudly scold her, we've seen how George treats people, how is he not good enough for you, to be insulted by your family, don't talk to us, the scheming ones. At such times, Willow had no defense she couldn't deny her mother's insults. And indeed, before this, I was an impeccable beaufriend, of course. There were even more painful moments. Lucas also knew about my breakup with Willow, so he arranged a meal with several undergraduate classmates, both male and female, including a female classmate who had been pursuing me for years. Willow stood at the bottom of the dormitory building, watching me leave with the group. She seemed to want to join us, but ultimately did nothing. She had already lost the right to stand by my side. During the meal, I kindly informed these friends that I was planning to go abroad for further studies and to heal my emotional wounds. Lucas, who despises injustice, immediately cursed. Willow is really something. Just because her family has some money, they treat people like thieves. George, rest assured, we won't invite her to any future reunions. Although I didn't consider Lucas to be very reliable, I still smiled and said, she's also in a difficult situation. Don't make it hard for her. Lucas clicked his tongue. Even now, you're still defending her. Let's be clear. Willow is pretending to be innocent. If she had any backbone, you two wouldn't be in this situation. Always playing the victim. It's disgusting to see. I fiddled with the food on my plate. Actually, I also bore some responsibility for the current situation between Willow and me. If I had been smarter. I would have realized her parents' views on me earlier and broken up when the relationship was still shallow, avoiding trouble for both sides, if I had been dumber. I might not have seen through her family's guard against me and would have happily married Willa. I would have muddled through life without a clue, but I am just an ordinary person. This breakup felt like a dull knife cutting through flesh, only now do I gradually feel the heart-wrenching pain. It's not that I don't love Willow. It's just that I will always love myself a little more. As graduation approached, more and more people invited me to farewell dinners. I initially declined all of them and only attended after confirming that Willow would not be present. But eventually, I still ran into her once, seeing that familiar figure. I turned and left, the host chased after me, trying to persuade me. George, I'm sorry, I just thought you could let bygones be bygones. I pretended not to see Willow hiding in the shadows and said, She's such a good person. I'm not worthy of her, 
That childhood friend of hers is more suited for her, who knows which word touched Willow. She suddenly rushed over, grabbed my sleeve, and said with trembling voice, George, you know, don't you? I should have told you earlier. All those words from David are lies. Don't believe him. I was startled and stepped back a few paces to break free. Willow became even more agitated, pulling at my clothes with increasing intensity, even tearing a hole in my sleeve. She cried out in a near breakdown. I don't like him at all. What my parents think is their business. Why can't you understand me? This happened at the busiest time on the food street outside the campus, and our commotion drew everyone's curiosity. Covering my eyes, I said helplessly, How else am I supposed to understand you? Your parents look down on me for being poor. Am I supposed to lack ambition because I'm poor? Is it okay for me to endure contempt? The person I love can't even firmly choose to stand by my side. Every time I take a step forward, she naturally breathes a sigh of relief and steps back. No matter how much I persist, what's the point? Willow, instead of questioning me, why don't you try convincing your parents to give up their prejudices? Because you don't dare. Because you are cowardly. Because you don't love me enough. I had already compromised enough. More onlookers gathered, and I spotted several juniors from University C among them. Sun even took out their phones to record. Willow, with terror streaming down her face, kept apologizing and tightly grasped my tattered sleeve, as if letting go would mean losing something forever. Mutual friends tried to separate us, and some burly guys from the nearby skier stalls joined in. Hey. Hey. What's going on here? Can a woman harass a man these days? Don't be shameless. In the chaos, Willow fell to the ground. As she fell, I instinctively tried to catch her, but in the surrounding crowd, I also got injured. Security guards and police were called to the scene. The dispute escalated, and five or six people were taken in for questioning. The street was covered with surveillance cameras, and from the footage, it was clear that Willow had initiated the physical contact, making her the primary culprit. With graduation approaching, it was best to avoid trouble. Willow's parents quickly arrived, offering apologies and trying to calm things down. They even pleaded with me. George, please tell the police that it's just normal couple quarrels. Why make it a big deal? I showed them my injured elbow, Uncle Yi, Auntie Yi. Willow and I broke up months ago. This is far from a normal couple quarrel. If you keep twisting the truth, I won't hesitate to escalate the matter, informing the police that Willow has been harassing me and seriously disrupting my life. If I say that, the nature of the issue changes. You two should think carefully, their faces turned pale, but in public, they held back. Uncle pulled his wife away, but she couldn't resist muttering. Didn't I say? A man like him is not worthy of my daughter. I usually have a good temper, but this time, I didn't hold back. I looked calmly into Willow's mother's eyes. Auntie is mistaken, it's Willow who is not worthy of me. At this, even the usually amiable Willow's father changed his expression. Young man, you should be kind. Our family has never treated you badly. I returned his smile, then please explain clearly how you haven't treated me badly. Did I ever spend your money? Before Willow's father could speak, her mother angrily replied, You spent Willow's money, and isn't her money given by us? We bought a house as a dowry, isn't that generous enough? And you even encouraged her to go abroad for a PhD. Can your family afford that? Isn't it relying on us? This time, I genuinely laughed. I took out a small notebook from my bag, opened it, and handed it to her, word by word. These are all the expenses between Willow and me since we started dating. Every penny she spent, I spent too. We always went Dutch, fair and square. As for your house, I haven't stayed there for even a day. As for where I get the money to study abroad, I shifted my gaze to the back. Willow, your mom doesn't know, but you do, right? Willow stood silently not far away, her eyes filled with pain. Simple and straightforward as she was, she probably never expected her parents to be so aggressive. Her tears seemed to have dried up, and she said hoarsely, George wins national scholarships every year, gets allowances for projects, occasionally takes private jobs, and does part-time work. His grades are excellent, and he has scholarships for his PhD. Mom, I've told you many times, George isn't after our money, why don't you believe it? Her mother, both ashamed and angry, gritted her teeth,
You're young. I stopped caring about these debates and prepared to put my mind at ease and spend more time with my parents. To my surprise, my parents sold their house in the small town and planned to move back to the countryside. We are retired. Going back to farming is good. We sold it for 500,000 yuan. George, you should give this money to Willow. We don't have much money, but we hope you both can live well. I hadn't told them about my breakup with Willow, but now. It's time to confess, my parents don't have much education and don't understand too many principles, but they know to treat their future daughter-in-law well. When I was in my first year of graduate school, they came to Sea City to visit me, which was our first family trip. Looking back, Willow's mom insisting on inviting my parents to dinner in Sea City probably had the intention of evaluating my family. My parents brought the best local specialties from our hometown. My dad is not good at talking. At the dinner table, he politely told Willow's mom, Our child is far away. We can't help much. Please take care of him. Willow was very enthusiastic, insisting that my parents stay at Bianhua Garden. George just bought a new mattress. It's very comfortable. Thinking back, Willow's mom's smile was a bit bitter at that time. Probably, in her view. With me buying furniture and my parents staying over, it undoubtedly declared my ambition to settle in her house and my parents. Selling all their assets for only 500,000 yuan, not enough to buy a bathroom in Sea City. How could I blame Willow's parents for being wary? Everyone's money isn't easy to come by, so it's natural for them to be cautious and critical. But my intentions and my parents' intentions shouldn't be trampled on. I held back tears and hugged my parents. Mom and Dad, don't worry, I won't let others look down on our family. I definitely won't. Finally, I graduated smoothly from B University. The recommendation letter written by my mentor played a significant role, and I successfully enter another top university for my PhD, receiving the highest scholarship awarded to B University students in the past five years. I moved from one campus to another, although the living expenses were sufficient. Studying abroad was extremely challenging. The feeling of being intellectually overwhelmed was constant, and the academic pressure was immense. Almost every day, I would ask myself, is this worth it? But I always told myself to hold on a little longer. As a greedy person, I wanted too much, and how could I achieve it without some hardship? It took me six months to overcome the language barrier and another six months to gradually find my footing in the lab. It was then that I felt life was back under my control, occasionally, to lighten my mood. I would check the social media accounts of David. David studied the most superficial major in business. He argued with his mother too much, causing his mother to return to the country in anger and stop talking to him. His credit card was cut off by his family, and he had to apologize to his parents to get his living expenses again. He was in his third year of master's studies, but still hadn't completed his credits. However, his business as a purchasing agent was flourishing. Later, he returned to the country, preparing to get married. The bride was not Willow. I asked Anna to help me with a wedding gift for David. How much should I give? She asked. 72,500. Anna didn't get into graduate school, and instead, she went into event planning. She was good at understanding people's hearts and was doing well in her job. We would occasionally chat. She was surprised. Why this number? That's the price of the watch David gave me. When I went abroad for my studies, I didn't have much luggage. Besides the essential clothes, I only took that watch with me. Whenever I felt the future was bleak and unbearable, I would take it out and look at it for a moment. It commemorated my sincere love that perished because of materialism. It also reminded me that a child without an umbrella needs to run harder to avoid getting soaked. But I am not someone who likes to owe others, so I need to return the money to David, as if I had bought it from him. After attending the wedding, Anna came back and complained to me, the bride is an internet celebrity. His parents didn't seem happy, with dark faces throughout the event, reportedly because of a premarital pregnancy. It said that the bride used to. I laughed, all right, I asked you to deliver the gift money, you don't need to gather so much gossip. I thought that was the end of it, but unexpectedly, I received a call from David not long after. In the end, our circles are small, and he could easily get in touch with me through someone. He politely thanked me for the wedding gift. After years without contact, his verse sounded con and mature. I said, it's nothing, 
We weren't that close back then. And you gave me such an expensive gift. I was quite touched. He seemed a bit speechless. Actually, I wanted to apologize. I was a bit reckless back then. Hurting Willow and you. I'm sorry. George. This apology sounded quite ridiculous. So, I couldn't help but laugh but still maintained my politeness. It's been years. There's no need to bring it up. David took a deep breath and continued to apologize. No. I really feel sorry for you both. These years, Willow hasn't had it easy. After finishing school, she couldn't pass the exams for civil service or teaching positions and ended up working in her mother's company. She's been going on blind dates arranged by her family, but none lasted long. She's been waiting for you. I heard you recently got a faculty position at the university, which is impressive, and you haven't been in a relationship. So, if possible, could you consider her again? Listening to his rambling, I didn't respond. Willow remembering me wasn't a surprise. We were each other's first love, met at the most passionate time of our lives, and spent five beautiful years together. Although we didn't make it to the end, it was enough to leave a deep imprint on each other. However, she might not necessarily be waiting for me. It could be that the boyfriends her parents chose weren't to her liking. I lazily asked David, consider her again? In what capacity are you asking me this? As her childhood friend or someone who once had a crush on her? David defended himself, I never liked Willow, if that's what you're concerned about, then you're lying. I didn't do it on purpose, and he asked me to find a way to break you two up. And he always said you and Willow weren't suitable, and if I could make you feel inferior, you would leave her. Years ago, and he looked down on me. So why does she approve of me now? David hesitated. She still cares about Willow. Instead of seeing her searching endlessly. So she wants to settle for me. I couldn't help but laugh. Sorry. I'm not interested. I'm doing well now and don't want to revisit past disappointments. David sighed. Won't you reconsider? All right then. I always knew that it was Willow's mother who was truly dissatisfied with me. David just followed her wishes. This call was likely also influenced by Willow's mother. But I always had a question, as David was about to hang up. I finally asked, David, even if the Liu family treats you like a son, why did you willingly follow their instructions to break up me and Willow? Willow really cared about you and treated you like a brother. Why did you do that to her? David took a short breath and opened his mouth with difficulty. Because I was jealous of you. I was confused. Jealous of me. It was truly unexpected. David was a rich kid. Why would he be jealous of me? Do you remember you helped me with an assignment once? I got a perfect score for that assignment, and the teacher praised me, saying I was the most talented Chinese student he had ever seen. In the following three years, I did try hard, but no matter how much I stayed up or studied, I always got the same comment. What a pity. David, you're a smart student. You can write an essay so perfectly. But why don't you work hard and prepare well for the exams? I had no way to explain. That's when I realized, George, I was very jealous of you. I was jealous that you could easily reach heights I could never attain. So, I wanted to destroy something you had to bring you down a notch. I succeeded. You and Willow didn't end up together. But I didn't feel any Joe. It's hard to describe my feelings. Shocked, helpless, but mostly relieved. I had considered many possibilities for why David acted the way he did. Maybe he secretly liked Willow, looked down on my humble background, or found my personality unlikable, but I never thought it was because he believed he wasn't as smart as me. So, I too had something worth his envy. That sensitive, fragile, doubtful, and insecure small town student was also envied by someone. It's indeed ironic, but also suddenly liberating. After hanging up the phone, I took out the watch from the drawer, I had kept this watch for years, carrying it around but never wearing it in public. The diamond sparkled brightly, and the intricate design was exquisite. David had good taste, it was indeed beautiful. I admired it quietly for another minute, then put it back in the box, pushed it into the drawer, and locked it. No matter how luxurious or expensive, it was just a cold ornament. Apart from its beauty, it had no use so it didn't suit me. Now, I'm the youngest Chinese professor at this prestigious overseas university. Wearing a watch while taking students to the lab would be very inconvenient.